Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 14th October 2017. I am Sagan Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, a company based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, or more importantly, how it may help in your trading, you may visit the website www.superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will use Q technical charts to look at oil, gold, and broad market ETFs. Before going into broad market internal analysis and sector and industry analysis using graphs and ranking table. Along the way, we may review some of the trades shared in our community and look for potential trades for the coming week. Q&A is throughout the session. You may ask questions through the Q&A panel and I will try to answer them as we go along. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We start by looking at oil using the ETF USO. We are looking at USO using weekly backdrop template on the left hand side and daily hop on template on the right hand side. This is our standard combined template we call at a glance that we use to decide if there is a Q trade setup at the right edge of the chart. In last week's class, we saw that after hitting upper boundary in the daily chart, USO displayed bear release signal and it came down to the yellow direction line. We had noted that in the longer term weekly chart, the backdrop chart, US oil was in uptrend. We also mentioned that if price came to this memory support in weekly and the corresponding memory support in daily and went up from there, it might give us a bounce long trade setup. However, as we can see, USO didn't come to the memory support, it went up from the yellow direction line. And as of end of Friday, it has given us a bullish cyan flow color candle in the daily chart. The candle shape is also very bullish. Both in daily chart, which has a long lower tail, and in weekly chart, which has a long hollow body. The weekly backdrop candle color is also bullish. So if we have to say whether US oil is bullish or bearish at the right edge of the chart, we have to conclude that it is bullish. The other question is, is there a Q trade setup at the right edge of the chart? For that, what I always ask myself first is, what is the current market state? Is it in uptrend, sideways market, exhausting market, or reversing market? Looking from the right side and looking into the chart, I cannot see any clear uptrend or downtrend. So I have to say that looking from the right side, in the recent period, 
it is not in any trend. Though in the weekly chart over a longer period, it is in uptrend. Therefore, for swing trading, there is no valid trade setup at the right edge of the chart. However, if somebody wants to take a day trade using Q fine tune real time chart, maybe on Monday or Tuesday, then the preferred direction would be the long direction. Let's now move to gold. We mentioned in last week's roundup that gold went to the upper boundary line and came straight down to the lower boundary line and below that. We call these areas while swings areas and the queue system and the unambiguous trade checklists are designed to keep us away from the market during such wild move times. So there was no valid queue trade setup at the end of previous week. We had observed last Friday that price came to the wide direction line and went up from there on Friday with a pretty bullish shape candle. There was no valid Q trade setup. However, we mentioned that one may look at gold miners to see if there would be any potential long trade in case gold went up from Friday's candle. GLD actually went up. So if somebody was taking day trades based on last weekly market roundups discussion, those trades would be taken only in the long direction. And they would probably end up being profitable trade. I had shared a trade idea on a gold miner recently in traders community. Let us look at that community post and then look at the chart as of today. We can go to the traders community following the community menu and for the trade ideas we can click on the trade ideas menu. This was the post on October 3rd, I had looked at the gold mining industry using Q edge. You could also use Q drill now to do the same and saw that gold was starting to turn around, turning cyan that is bullish as an industry after being magenta that is bearish over multiple review periods. I had drilled down and found a stock SBGL, Sibani Gold. Using Q Vital, I could identify that it had optimal valuation. The relative value score was in blue color. The stock also paid a very nice dividend, 6.33%. At that time, the chart was looking like this using at a glance template. It was starting to bounce up from a very deep watermark support level. I had mentioned that it was not a standard Q trade setup because the weekly candle color at that time was still not yellow. However, looking at the gold miners strength, the fact that the stock was fundamentally strong and it was bouncing up. I thought we could take a very low risk long trade. So let us look at this stock as of today. This is Sibani Gold using the at a glance template. I had shared the trade idea based on this day candle where the bull release signal had appeared after the stock bounced up from the watermark support level. Since then, price is gradually moving up. The entry price was at this level. Stock would be just below recent low. So this was the risk distance. 
the risk distance has not been covered yet. If SBGL goes up on Monday or Tuesday, it may come to a price level where we'll have reward that is at least as much as the risk that was taken in the trend. And if that happens, at least partial profit could be booked. Here, yet again, using Q edge or Q drill, we could identify a very low risk, long trade opportunity in a gold mining stock. Coming back to GLD, we see that it has moved up since our discussion in the last weekly market roundup. It has gone up considerably. We will not take any long trade right now because the stop loss will be far away. The weekly candle is bullish both in terms of backdrop color cyan as well as the shape. That is a long hollow candle. If GLD could come down a little bit and tilt up from there, then it will give us a very low risk long trade opportunity. That is a go with flow long trade opportunity. We may wait for that. Before going into the broad market ETFs, let's first look at the broad market internals. Every week we look at broad market internals using NASDAQ composite index weekly chart on the left hand side NYSE composite index weekly chart on the right hand side. We also look at three pairs of internals, new high lows, advanced decline and up down volume. Because this analysis is using broad indices and weekly charts, this is to be used only for longer term investment decisions, not for swing trading and certainly not for day trading. This week, both NASDAQ as well as NYSE composite indices went up. They made new all-time highs. Clearly, both of them, the indices, are in uptrend in the weekly charts. It will take some time before they turn into downtrend with lower high and lower lows. The strength is yet not visible in the internals. The earlier peaks are not breached yet. If we look at specifically this week's internals, we see that many of them went up. One, two, three, four, five of them went up. Surprisingly, one of them still went down. That is the up-down volume, the third indicator, up-down volume for NASDAQ. For NYSE, all the three internals went up and closed above zero. For NASDAQ, two of them went up, one closed above zero, two closed below zero. So in summary, based on this objective data, we have to conclude that the indices continue to be in uptrend. There is no doubt about that. The internals continue to be weak, not able to breach previous week's peaks. And for this specific week, we have to say the internals overall are bullish because four of them closed positive and five of them went up. If we look at the indices, we see that NYAC went up and NASDAQ also went up. And similar strength is visible in the broad market ETFs as well. However, that doesn't give us enough confidence to take bullish positions and we will understand why when we go through the broad market ETF charts.
let's look at that now we are looking at spy using q at a glance template we can see from the weekly chart that it made another new all time high however when we look at the daily chart we see that for this week price effectively didn't move much it grinded higher but by very small range candles and it displayed a bearish headwind signal on monday though there was no valid headwind short trade setup the etf making all time high however the daily candles being so narrow range doesn't give us confidence on the bullishness of the market the other thing that doesn't give us confidence is this ridiculously small weekly volume in spy it is ridiculously small for this week and we will see the same in several other broad market etfs as well let's look at qqq from the weekly chart we see that qqq also made a new all time high again in the daily chart there was a bearish headwind on thursday and price has moved higher but not much in fact this week qqq went up by 0.5% and out of that friday's move up was you can see 0.4% or so so this doesn't give confidence from the candle chart and the same confidence is not also there from the very low activity in this week let's look at dia just like spy and qqq dia also made new all time high and the activity is again ridiculously small so small you can hardly see it dia also displayed a bearish headwind signal though there was no valid bearish headwind trade setup it grinded higher with narrow range candles in the daily chart again the slow grinding upward candles and the minuscule activity doesn't give us confidence on the bullishness of the market you can see that all the three etf candle colors have changed to yellow that is neutral in the daily charts all these traffic light candle colors were green that is bullish in previous weeks market round up we also saw in previous weeks round up that iwm russell 2000 etf which was outperforming other etfs for several weeks was starting to become weak in previous week itself this week it we can further iwm is the only broad market etf out of the force that we regularly study that did not make a new all time high we can see from the weekly chart that it closed lower from previous week we observed last week's chart in the market round up and saw that the daily candle color had turned yellow in the previous week itself so it was weakest previous week and it declined this week traffic light candle color in daily chart has turned red that is bearish and we can clearly see from the relative performance that since last week it is starting to underperform the market again activity this week is abysmally low that is why i mentioned that the broad market etf charts though they are making new all time highs for many of them the overall candle patterns 
traffic light colors, the existence of very shadowed sign in several of them, and abysmally low activities doesn't give us confidence on the bullishness of the overall market. Under what condition could we start taking long trades? Let's look at SPY chart. Earlier, I had mentioned that if the broad market ETFs like SPY broke out of the resistance level, which it did on this candle, and then came down, tilted up, that would give us a very low risk go with flow long trade opportunity. The breakout has already happened several weeks ago. It is grinding higher. It hasn't tilted down and tilted up again. Unless that happens, in my view, based on objective data, it will be risky to start taking long trades, especially in stocks that are already at pendulum high. None of the ETFs have any valid Q trade setup at the right edge of the chart. Interestingly, if we look at some of the biggest stocks or the stocks that move the market most, we'll see that they are also not at a position where we could take long trade in them. Let's look at Netflix. Netflix had some upgrades recently. Apparently they increased their pricing and analysts thought that this stock is going to move up. Now when analysts say that a stock is going to move up, some retail traders follow them. So it is not uncommon that after analysts give bullish assessment of a stock, especially when a stock is at pendulum high, because that is the time when retail traders take notice. If the stock is at pendulum low or somewhere in between, normal traders don't want to buy that. But Q traders are happy to buy at those lower levels because there are retail traders who follow the analyst advices and like to buy at the top. It is normal that after such an advice in a stock, it will move up a little bit. So it has broken out of the resistance. But after that move up this week, it has virtually moved sideways. So at the right edge, if we look from the right side of the chart, it is already at upper boundary. It is overbought, as we can see from the green stretch dot on top of the candles. So there is no low risk entry point right now. On Friday, it has a very indecisive candle with both upper and lower tails, very narrow range body with very high activity. This is not a very bullish pattern. When a stock is at pendulum high, probably at all time high, gives a indecisive candle and is accompanied by heavy activity. It's not a very nice chart to take long trade. Let's quickly look at three other such stocks. People say FANG stocks. Let's look at Facebook. In terms of fundamentals, Facebook is pretty strong. However, we see that the stock is at pendulum high and after the recent earnings, which was positive and better than previous earnings for many weeks now, since end of July. Now we are middle of October for three months. It is effectively moving sideways, not going down also, not able to go above the high that was created by last earnings weekly candle. It is in fact right at watermark resistance level in weekly and also at watermark resistance level in daily. We have a bearish shape candle on Friday. Activity was muted. 
it is at resistance level, the watermark levels, many of them coming together. So this is not a point where we would like to take any long trend. What about Google? Google declined after last quarterly earnings, then slowly went up and now is precisely at the watermark resistance level that was formed from the last quarterly earnings scandal. In the daily chart also, it is at or near multiple watermark resistance levels, slightly above them. Both on Thursday and Friday, we have bearish shape candles with long upper tails. Activity is muted. Price is at upper boundary at multiple watermark resistance levels. These are not points where we would like to take a long trade. Last stock we look at is Amazon, the last one of the FANG stocks. Amazon made an all time high in the week of last quarterly earnings. It had a very bearish shape candle at that time and also backdrop candle color reversed from cyan to magenta, from bullish to bearish. From there, price dropped. And for several weeks now, in the weekly chart, it is moving sideways. In the daily chart, it came to watermark resistance level. On Thursday, tried to go above that, actually closed above that probably, or right at the watermark level but had a bearish shape candle with long upper tail. Friday, it closed higher, but the shape of the candle is again bearish, at least from opening price, it dropped. Activity is muted. Price is at upper boundary. It is near the watermark resistance level in daily. So again, this is not a time where we could take a long trade in Amazon. The trade would have very big stop loss. We see that the broad markets are grinding higher, though with very narrow range candles, the traffic light candle colors in all the ETFs, SPY, QQQ, DIA and IWM, either turned neutral, yellow, or turned red in case of IWM, that is bearish. And three of them, QQQ, DIA, SPY, also displayed bearish headwind signal. Four of the strongest stocks in the market, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Google, are at a price level where we would not like to take a long trade. So this analysis of the ETFs and these four strong stocks show that this is probably not the time to start taking new long trades. Now let us look at the sector and industry analysis. We are making some, in my view, fantastic changes in the tools that we use for sector industry analysis. We had QH sector and industry analyst where we were looking at heat map and ranking tables for sectors and industries, many of them. And we had Q Vital where we were able to do fundamental analysis as well as peer analysis of global stocks. Now for USA, we are merging them, the Q Edge and Q Vital to create a complete top-down analysis tool. We call it Q Drill because it is for USA market at present. We are calling it Q Drill. Now I will like to highlight some changes from the earlier approach. Earlier, the QH was covering a very large number of industries. And the aim was to look at industries that are similar and are going up together. That would give us confidence, more confidence to take long trade in those industries because similar industries were going up together. With that aim, we had 
250-260 industries that we were analyzing. Whereas Q Vital was looking at the stocks, industries from a different approach. Now, because we are combining the industry sector analysis and stock fundamental analysis, we have to streamline the approach. So that streamlining is also resulting in a slight reduction in the number of industries that we see in Q drill. But when we end up releasing the general version of Q drill, it will end up having about 170 industries as against the 260 or so industries being covered in QH right now. That streamline will help us synchronize the industries of Q vital and Q drill. It is going to be an extremely useful product and we will see Q drill in action in today's session also. For this week, I'm still using the industry analysis charts or graphs based on the larger list of industries that were in QH. We start with sector performance analysis. Every week we look at 11 economic sectors. We study them over three review periods. The red bar represents performance of this week, yellow bar performance of one week prior to the red bar and blue bar performance of two weeks prior to the yellow bar. Together, they give us performance over four weeks or about one month of data. We see that six of the sectors gained this week and five declined. This shows a balanced picture of the market. Materials and technology. These are the only two sectors that are now up for all the three review periods. Others are flip-flopping, like consumer discretionary that turned negative this way. It was positive last week. Whereas energy turned positive, it was negative last week. Financial turned negative this week, it was positive in the previous week. This is showing the overall flip-flop up-down move in the market, though the major market ETFs are slowly grinding higher, as we saw. So this is again not giving us confidence on the bullishness of the overall market. If we look at utilities, after declining from the very top, utilities were one of the best performing sector for many periods. It declined from that top and now it has gained for two successive weeks. The red candle is to the right side and the yellow candle is also to the right side of the zero point. This shows apparent strength. However, when we look at XLU, the utilities ETF, the two weeks up move only brought it to the value area in Q daily chart. And on Friday, it had a strong reversal day. Q drill also shows recent weakness in utilities. Together, they don't show the strength in utilities for taking any long trade. Let's have a look at XLU using Q charts and also at utilities industries using Q drill. We are looking at utilities ETF XLU using at a glance template. Interestingly, there was a bearish headwind on this week from their price fail. Earlier, we had two bearish headwinds at these times and those also led to price drop. In the daily chart, we see that after this bearish headwind, price drop tried to go up and actually broke above the watermark level that was created by the bearish headwind. Broke out but immediately reversed down and that reversal candle also had a bearish headwind signal. You have noticed that if a bearish headwind comes, 
leads to a drop in price, then next time when price comes to that level, either reverses from there or creates a false upside breakout, as was in this case, Many times it means that there are still sellers pending at this price level and may lead to further drop in the market, which happened in XLU. It came to the lower boundary and then a bullish headwind signal had appeared. Whenever a bullish headwind signal is there, we are careful about protecting our profit. So we will use trailing stop in, in any short trade that we were holding, that stop would be hit. If it was a valid headwind long trade setup, we would also take a long trade. I'm not sure if the valid long trade setup was there, but at least the headwind signal would lead us to protect profit using trailing stop. For last two weeks, we saw the sector went up the XLU also went up, but on Friday, it reversed heavily. It had opened above Thursday's high and then came down. There is no valid short trade setup at the right edge of the chart and there is no strength to take long trade as well. If XLU now came down a little bit and tilted up, then it would give us a valid go with flow long trade setup. We don't try to predict the market, but just by looking at the weekly and daily charts, it doesn't seem that it will happen. But that is just a thought. It's not what we use to actually take a trade. In any case, the reversal candle of Friday, the fact that two weeks move up in the sector could only bring it near the value area is saying us that we are not ready to take any long trade. We can look at the Q drill also. So this is Q drill, still under development, will be released soon. Let me go through some of the features of Q drill, and then we we'll look at the utilities industries. Every time we open Q drill, it analyzes the 11 economic sectors. And on the version I am using right now, about 170 industries. It analyzes the performance over 12 monthly review periods and more frequently for recent periods over 10 days, five days, two days, and one day. Assigns rank to the sectors and industries over each period, one to the best performing sector industry and the large number to the worst performing sector industry and also applies a heat map. Cyan to the strongest one, magenta to the weakest one. This was available in QH sector and industry analyst also. On top of that now, for every review period, we are able to see how many of the sectors went up. The first number is number of sectors that went up. So for one day, we see that five went up, six came down. Over two days, same number. Over five days, six went up and five came down. If we see over last 12 month period, then we see that nine of the sectors went up, only two went down. The same numbers we see for the industries. So over this week, we see 103 industries went up, 70 went down. However, over two days, 99 only went up, 72 went down over one day, 101 and 71 are the numbers. So every time we open Q drill now, other than the rank and the heat map, we have insight on exactly how many sectors and industries are going up and going down for the recent review periods, for past review periods also, but of more interest to the trader would be the recent review periods. Both for sector and industry ranking, 
the top 20 and bottom 20% ranks are now shown in bold case. So even if we do filter or sorting, we'll be able to know which ones are at the top 20%, which ones are at the bottom 20%. And five days period is most important to us for both swing trade entry as well as long-term investment entry in case the industry is turning around from magenta to cyan. That's why we have made the five day period slightly bigger case. Other than this data at the right edge, we also see the rank change over multiple periods. So rank change from 10 day to five days, rank change from five day to two days, and rank change from two day to one day. We interpret it in the same way. Cyan color means that the industry is getting stronger. Magenta means it is getting weaker. We can click the investigate button, the magnifying glass to copy the data. It will copy the data in sector work area for sectors, industry work area for the industries. And we can do our further analysis here. We came here to look at the utilities. If we filter Q drill industries for the utilities, we see that over five days and over 10 days period, they gained somewhat. However, over last two days and one day period, they weakened again. This is another reason other than the XLU chart reversing strongly on Friday that I mentioned that we are not ready to take long trades in utilities yet. Would you agree with that analysis? If you are using QH or Q drill regularly, you'll be able to use this insight, immediately visible from the heat map and ranking table to precisely enter your trades with more and more forces in favor of your trade. After the analysis, we can click the magnifying glass for each of the tabs for sector area. If you click the magnifying glass, it will refresh the sector data. You see the industry data is not refreshed, but if I click the magnifying glass on industry tab, it will refresh the data. So I don't have to remember where any filter or sorting was applied. Let's go back to sector industry analysis. We saw that telecom reversed strongly this week. Over the green bar, we see that telecom was the biggest gainer. Whereas this week, telecom has reversed strongly. It is the worst performer. However, Q drill shows telecom industries are weak for many periods. So it is probably too late to take shots in these stocks. We look at telecom industries further while we do the industry analysis. We may even look for long opportunities in telecom. We'll look into that later. Let's look at the industries best performing in last five days. Four of them are related to supermarkets, hypermarkets, etc and they went up significantly between 3.2 to 5.7%. So food distribution and convenience store, hypermarket, supermarket, general merchandise stores and food retailers went up. Food retailers went up by 3.2% and food distribution convenience as well as hypermarkets went up by 5.7%. These are significant gains. Many of these industries were languishing for a long time. And Q drill will immediately show us that they are starting to strengthen. We can use Q drill to do 360 degrees top down analysis. We don't have to switch between Q edge and Q vital anymore. So using the top down analysis, now we can start looking for long trades in stocks that are fundamentally strong. And if you did that, you will see Kroger, KR, 
it went up very nicely after giving a valid box long trade setup on 3rd October this way. You could take this easily and confidently using Q drill and Q charts. Care is also fundamentally strong as you can see from Q drill. So let's first look at Q drill for the best performing industries and then we'll drill down into Kroger. In Q drill, we can anytime refresh the data in the industry work area by clicking the magnifying glass so that we don't have to remember if we filtered or sorted anything. Over five days, if we sort from smallest to largest, immediately the best performing industries come to the top. So we see hypermarket, supermarkets is there, food retailers are also there. We can click the get stocks button here or control shift S hotkeys and it will give us the stocks in food retail industry from KC to ANCSQ. It has found 16 stocks. You see the industry is still not matching the food retail industry. That is because we haven't clicked the calculator button to do the fundamental statistics calculation. Once I click that, it gets all the data from Thomson Reuters icon or Metastock Zenith, it does a lot of calculation. And immediately using the color coding, we can see that Kroger, KR, is a stock that is optimally valued. Both relative and internal value scores are blue. We just need to look at the color coding. And on top of that, in terms of growth also, it is one of the strongest. The very strongest in terms of EPS growth and also strong relative to many others in terms of revenue growth. There is a small dividend. Earnings is not nearby. It went up by 1.49% on Friday. But earlier on 3rd October, it gave us a valid box long trade setup. And if we go back to food retail industry, we can see that on 3rd October, the industry was already strong, turning from very much magenta color earlier over many months to cyan. So if we did the drill down, we had identified Kroger as one of the strongest, having good balance between valuation and growth, we could easily and confidently take the box long trade setup. Let's look at Q charts. We see on the left hand side of the weekly chart, Kroger dropped. That was the period where the food retail industry was also languishing. Then it displayed multiple bullish headwind signals on the weekly chart. It created a false downside breakout one week before when price tried to go below the watermark support level, but closed above it. And this week it went up. On this candle in the daily chart, we see that price tried to go below the watermark support levels, both the longer term support level here, as well as the shorter term support level here. And on this candle, it closed above those support levels. So it created a false downside breakout. It had a bull release signal and it had extreme activity at those support levels earlier. So that gave us a textbook box long trade setup on this day with very small risk. Our stop loss will be just below the recent low. Entry price will be at the close of this candle. Our risk will be this distance. And when price came to the yellow declining direction line, we would already book partial profit. By that time, the risk distance was covered more than that. As the stock was and still fundamentally strong, the industry was strengthening and is still continuing to strengthen. 
So there would not be any reason to exit full position. Partial position may still be held at the end of Friday. But we'll close enough position to make the overall trade risk free from this day onward. This is yet another example where we could use Q drill to identify strong fundamental stocks, wait for a long trade setup and confidently take the long when the unambiguous checklist conditions were met. We could use Q drill in a similar manner to take long trade in iron and steel industry. It is one of the best performers this way. You could track this using QEdge industry analyst or let's say QDrill now to take a very profitable trade. A go with flow long trade setup on MT, ArcelorMittal, one of the world's largest steel manufacturers. And MT was also optimally valued as we can see from QVITAL. So let's look at QDrill for the industry and then we may look at empty using Q fighter and then Q charts. In the industry work area, we can search for iron or steel. Okay, let's search for steel. Okay, so we can see that steel was weak in earlier periods starting to strengthen in recent periods. This week it was clearly bullish cyan color. So we were only going to look for long trades in steel industry. We could drill down by clicking the get stocks button. It's retrieving the steel stocks. Just found 28 stocks. We can click the calculator button to do the fundamental statistics calculation. It is retrieving data. It has got all the steel stocks information. ArcelorMittal is not in this list. We can click the magnifying glass to copy the data into vital work area. And then if you want to search for MT, is not there in the list. So if Q drill doesn't retrieve the stock that you want to analyze, you can always rely on Q fighter. We'll continue to use Q fighter for that reason and also because Q vital allows us to analyze global stocks. So let's get the peers of ArcelorMittal. It has found 24 stocks. We can click the calculator button, just like in QDrill, to do the vital statistics calculation. Instantly from the color coding, we see that it is optimally valued. Growth is not optimal, but that, as we keep saying, is expected. We don't expect both optimal valuation and high growth at the same time. We may sometimes get lucky, but that is not the usual case. Having strength in either of them, is enough for us to try to take a long position. So MT was optimally valued, is still optimally valued. The industry was strong. So we would keep an eye on this stock using Q charts. Let's look at Q charts. When we look at ArcelorMittal using at a glance template, we see that in the weekly chart, it came to the watermark resistance level, moved sideways for a while, declined, and this week sharply went up. While that was happening in the weekly chart, in the daily chart, it went up from the lower boundary, came to value area, slightly above that, tilted down, went up again on the sand candle. Those are the optimal entry points for go with flow long trade entry with very small stop loss. So on this candle, we will be happy to take a long trade 
at the closing price stop loss just below recent low our usual profit target for go with flow long trades are at the upper boundary in this case that coincided with the watermark resistance level so that was easily hit on friday friday had a huge gap up there on thursday itself we had covered much more than the risk distance if we look at the high of thursday so we had this much of profit and our risk distance was very small so by using q drill we could keep an eye on arcelormittal whose industry was strong fundamentally the stock was strong and when the go with flow long trade setup came on this day it was a very low risk entry we will be very happy to take the long trade and again that gave us very significant profit let's look at the worst performing industries over last 5 days we see that three of them are related to telecom wireless telecom diversified telecom and telecom services in q drill or q edge we can see that these worst performing industries are now weak for many periods and the best time to take short trades in these industries that time has already passed if we drill down into integrated telecom services we see that at&t t and verizon vj are two of the strongest stocks in terms of fundamentals recently they declined and are approaching support in q charts for both of them you may keep an eye on them for potential reversal and low risk long trade opportunities q drill also highlights that their earning dates are approaching both are near 52 week lows and pays nice dividends let's look at q drill on telecom then drill down into integrated telecom stocks and look at their fundamentals finally we will also look at their charts in industry work area we click the magnifying glass to refresh the data filter for telecom industries and we see all the telecom industries and now week for many months so we are probably not going to take the best shots now wireless telecom tried to improve in the middle then declined again if we drill down into integrated telecom services go to q vital it has found number of stocks we click on the calculator button to do the vital statistics calculation from the color coding we can instantly see that t and vg both have very nice balance between valuation the relative value scores are in blue and also growth the growth columns are generally green both of them have earnings nearby the next eps dates are highlighted with red background so we will be cautious about taking long trade right now using stocks they pay some significant dividend as well 5.4 4.9% respectively for at&t and verizon because earnings is nearby we may not like to take a long stock trade but short put verticals may be appropriate they will be low risk and if the stocks go up we will benefit both from stocks up move that is delta move as well as volatility crash the volatility will decline after earnings is out so we may keep an eye on t and vg let's look at their charts we see that at&t t dropped heavily it's interesting to see a stock as big as at&t drop so much just prior to earnings 
it tried to close actually closed below this watermark support level came close to this watermark support level in daily had extreme high activities over last two days friday's candle has a lower tail though it also has a solid body so the shape is mixed traffic light candle color is red in daily so that is bearish weekly chart shows a very large drop the backdrop candle color is magenta bearish shape is strongly bearish price again came to multiple watermark support levels so the fact that earnings debt is nearby and then it dropped so much over thursday and friday will mean that their implied volatility is very high now and the options will be highly priced that's why a short put vertical strategy may be effective under such situations if we look at q sonar the trade station q elite sonar dashboard view and we type atnt we can see the option price is at very high level 77 percentile let's look at verizon also is also at a very high percentile level we can just look at the color coding so both of their options are highly priced we could look at that using the options template also on q charts we can see that when you use the options template on q elite the candle colors are cyan showing that the implied volatility is very high which is shown from this line graph as well if we look at atnt the same thing we have cyan color in the daily candle chart options template so which shows that options prices are very high that is why it may be a good strategy to try to take a long trade using short put verticals provided there is a valid trade setup the atnt we saw is near watermark support levels both in weekly and daily let us have a relook at verizon verizon is very close to memory support level both in weekly and daily also had high activity on thursday and friday though not very or extreme high so you could look for potential reversal trades in both of them using short put verticals every week we also look at the biggest rank improvers and decliners often they give us cue about which industries are going to do better or worse in coming weeks q drill shows that motorcycle manufacturers this industry was weak for a long time and is gaining strength now it is one of the best performers this week in terms of rank improvement using q vital we could see that harley davidson that is hog it's at pendulum low is near watermark support levels in both weekly and daily charts it has earnings nearby again so there may be just like in case of that atnt and verizon stocks low risk long trade opportunities using short put verticals provided the charts give a low risk entry opportunity let's look at motorcycle manufacturers in q drill and then look at harley davidson's fundamentals and lastly we look at the q charts in the industry work area in q drill click the magnifying button to refresh the data and we already have the rank improvement columns so we could sort it over the 10 day to 5 day period smallest to largest we can see that motorcycle manufacturers this industry was deep magenta over many many monthly periods 
and turning cyan now. So these are the cases where we could look for not only swing long trade opportunities, but also longer term investment opportunities. We could drill down, clicking the get stocks button, go to QFighter. It has found three stocks. We could click the calculator button to do the vital statistics calculation and we can instantly see that none of them are optimally valued in terms of growth HOG Harley Davidson is the best also in terms of dividend it is the best stock in this list it has earnings nearby that's why the next EPS date is highlighted with red background color we could look at its chart the industry was weak for a long time and the stock HOG also dropped with that. Right now it is bouncing up from watermark support in weekly. However, there are memory resistance lines. We can see from daily also that it is bouncing up from watermark support with very high activity. However, memory resistance lines are there. Because earnings is nearby, it may be possible to take a long trade using short put verticals. Probably the options are very highly priced now. We can check that using the options template. From the options template, we see that candle colors at the right edge are green or cyan. It was cyan on Thursday, Friday it is green, showing that options are highly priced. So like in the at and case, Verizon case, it may be possible to take a bullish trade using short put verticals. If the stock goes up, that will make profit in the trade. And also after the earnings is out, the option prices will go down, implied volatility will crash, that will add to the profit of the trade. Even if the stock goes down a little bit after earnings, the gain from volatility crash may be higher than the drop from delta. And we could still end up having a profitable trade. Let me show the use of industry plus. In fact, the stock that I'm going to show now, there may be a possible long entry there. That is Comfort Delgro. We had analyzed it earlier also. It was at optimal price. It is still at optimal price. It's a transportation company, bus operator and taxi line operator. CMDG belongs to trucking, transportation kind of company. And we can see it is optimally valued, has the best possible relative value score. In terms of growth also, in this short list, it is the stronger one. If we change it to industry plus, it will not bring too many stocks because Singapore exchange is not that big. The country itself is very small, but it has found one more stock. And you will see that third stock is also transportation related, but not in ground transportation. It is in marine transportation. Interestingly, that stock is also optimally valued. Let me look up the CMDG's chart. Because it is a global stock, we'll use Q Global Metastock. Metastock is a beautiful platform. We can analyze any stocks from all over the world. I'm able to invest in multiple countries using Metastock. We are going to look at Comfort Del Gross, cmdg.si using at a glance template. And by looking at the chart, what would you decide? You may not know much about the stock, but you saw it is fundamentally optimally valued. Looking at the chart, do you think there is a possibility of taking a long trade? 
what do you think in the weekly chart it dropped severely at the right edge we see that it has displayed a bullish headwind in the weekly chart though the candle shape is mixed with an upper tail as well as a hollow body there is not enough bullish signal in the weekly chart daily chart seems to be slightly better it is still in downtrend in fact we can say in recent periods it is moving sideways we have a memory support line it is we have higher lows we don't have higher high yet it is in kind of triangle formation if we draw a trend line using the two tops here we can clearly see prices at pendulum low from the thumbs up signal and also the bull release signal came in cyan color on friday the stock went up the movement has turned green if it breaks out of this triangle formation it may give us not only a swing long trade opportunity but also a possible long term investment opportunity the other possibility could be that price comes to this memory support we would keep an eye using real time fine tune chart and try to precisely take a long trade at this memory support here if i remember correctly it pays a nice dividend also it's a quite well known stock let's look at cmdg using q vital does it pay nice dividend or not yes cmdg pays a pretty nice dividend of 5% so it may be a possible long candidate looking at the dividend at the chart and the optimal valuation of the stock the signals are not there yet the confirmed long entry signal but one could keep an eye on that so we looked at hog one of the stocks in motorcycle manufacturing industry which is at a low price earnings is nearing we might take a long trade using short put verticals we can use q drill down to do further such top down analysis so let's go to q drill once again can click the magnifying glass to refresh the data let's look at the best rank improvers so we short the rank change 10 to 5 days column from smallest to largest and the best rank improvers come to the top heavy electrical equipment is the most interesting one of the most interesting because it was weak for long time gained strength over 5 days and is holding on to the strength over 2 days and one day period whereas marine transportation was weak earlier gained strength over 5 days but then gave up some of its strength we may look at marine transportation also but heavy electrical equipment immediately catches the eye so we could drill down i am loving this top down drill down analysis using a single tool you can go to q vital it has found number of stocks you can click the calculator button to do the fundamental statistics calculation it does a lot of calculation and using color coding let's see which one will be most interesting immediately there is no doubt there is only one stock with both relative and internal value score 100 and blue color ppsi could be another one but clearly bwen is the most optimally valued without any doubt whatsoever so we could look at bwen using q charts should be simple like that trading should be simple like that and fun also like that for me at least bwen bwen 
looking at it using Q at a glance template. In the weekly chart, it displayed a bullish headwind several weeks ago, to the end of August. Since then, price didn't go down. The backdrop candle color turned cyan, turned to yellow for one week and again turned cyan. Price is being supported by a very long term memory support line in the weekly chart. The memory support lines are very interesting. They may be drawn automatically, smartly, from few days back to few years back. In this case, it seems to be coming from far, far away. We see that memory support existing in the daily chart as well. It was moving sideways, broke out of the watermark level, came down, now came to the memory support line. Traffic light candle color is still red. If it goes up from here, or even better, if it tries to go below the memory support and tilts up, we could try a very low risk entry trade in this stock. It is a low price stock. When such stocks go up, it can give us considerable profit. For example, last time when price came to this watermark level, we had a watermark support level here, gave a swing low and on this green candle, it went up with high activity, not very or extreme high. So we didn't have a perfect box long trade setup, we would not probably be able to take that trade. But it did go up significantly from a price of around 3.2 to above $4. So that was about 15 to 20% jump. In low price stocks, those jumps are possible. Still, we are low risk traders, we will not pile up on a stock like this, we will take equal risk trade in all the stocks, including BWEN. So if it goes up, give us a low risk entry point, we might consider taking a long trade in this. And we could identify this stock easily using Q drill. By the way, this is from the volume, we can see it is not a very high volume stock. So if you are trying to take a long trade in such a stock, need to watch out for the bid ask spread and try to take a long, if you at all take, using a limit price, probably at the bid, rather than placing the order on the ask. Lastly, we look at the worst rank decliners. If you remember in previous weeks, Roundup, we already noted the divergence between auto manufacturers and auto parts. Auto manufacturers were gaining rapidly. Several stocks, GM, Ford, they were at very high level. Whereas auto parts industries, they were strong, but the rank was starting to stabilize or even decline. This way we see auto manufacturers like auto truck manufacturers, automobile manufacturers, automobiles, they are in the worst rank decliners list as well as auto parts industry. Many stocks in these industries are pendulum high and their growth is slowing down. We can see that from QDRI or QVITA. Many of them are overvalued in QVITA in terms of fundamental valuation. So it may be time to be cautious on long holdings. No need to exit them if they are still going up. We may use trailing stock so that we can protect the profit. Using Q drill, you could do the top down analysis easily. Let's do that on auto components to proactively identify the stocks that are fundamentally weak. So we could be proactively ready with this stocks in our short list and look for optimal entry point on Q charts. Let's do the Q drill top down analysis on auto components. We are again at the industry work area tab. 
we can sort the rank change 10 to 10 days to 5 days column from largest to smallest and we can see several of the auto related industries are now among worst rank decliners so magenta color means they are worst rank decliners you have automobile manufacturer automobiles and auto parts somewhere we can filter by auto auto components we have auto components also in that list we can click the get stocks button move to vital tab it has found 42 stocks we click the calculator button to do the vital statistics calculation retrieving the data and it has found all the detail we are looking for stocks that are either poor in growth that is growth is in red color or poor in valuation so valuation in magenta color so dan is immediately seen to be one of them we see dan is immediately one interesting stock which is having very poor growth not too overvalued yet the valuation is not in magenta but growth is very weak so we could look at dan's technical charts it is actually dana holdings maybe somebody with name dan will not be happy if i say that it is dan but dan we can say and it has an interesting chart it is going up strongly in the weekly chart in clear uptrend in the previous week it had a bearish shape candle or we can say somewhat mixed it had a hollow body but had a long upper tail this week the backdrop candle color turned yellow neutral and we had an inside candle with a mixed shape again a solid body but with lower tail at the same time in the daily chart we see there was a bearish headwind and a bear release signal on this yellow candle and since then I think for about two weeks price is moving sideways there is no valid short trade setup in this chart but this stock has very poor growth now so if the industry continues to weaken it is in the worst rank decliner list if the industry continues to weaken this may be a stock that we would like to short let's see if we can find other interesting possible short opportunities from the drill down in terms of poor growth eps growth instantly from color coding we can see alv is one such stock not overvalued yet not magenta yet in terms of valuation at least relative valuation internal valuation we see it is overvalued but either having poor growth or poor valuation is enough for us to look for short opportunity so we could look at alv alv also has an interesting chart in the weekly chart backdrop template it was moving sideways then on this week it broke strongly higher came precisely to a longer term watermark resistance level then on friday closed slightly below that it is still overbought in the weekly chart in the daily we see that the huge gap up move that gave rise to this bullish shape weekly candle high of that created a watermark resistance level and since the gap up price couldn't close above that price moved down up down up came to the watermark level precisely to that daily watermark resistance level which we saw was also the level of a very long term watermark resistance and then declined from there there is no heavy activity bar so there is no standard trade setup box trade setup in this chart 
but this stock is fundamentally now poor in a way because the growth is poor. The stock is at pendulum high, we can see because the stretch release is in magenta color. So if it declines the industry as well as the stock, then this may be another stock where we would like to take a short run. So ALV is a possible short candidate. We can add it to our short list. ALV is one, DAN is one. We would prefer not to take a short in CPS or CTB. Especially not in CTB because it is optimally valued and growth is also quite good, at least the EPS growth. Revenue growth is negative. That is how we could use Q drill to look at the industries, both for the best performing, worst performing one using the five days period, short using that, or the best or worst rank decliners, rank changers. Like heavy electrical equipment, we found one possible long opportunity in there. The best rank improver or auto parts or automobile. You might look at auto manufacturers, automobile industries also. These were strong for a long time. Weekend in recent period, strengthened again. You may see if there is a fundamentally poor stock and then wait for an optimal short opportunity in that drill. You may do further analysis using Q drill. We'll try to release it soon. For the time being, you may continue to use Q edge along with Q vital. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you again for joining. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitable.